us today, Mr. Jayant Modi, the Managing Director of Barloker India. Barloker is a global player in polymer additives market and a market leader in the PVC stabilizer business worldwide and also in India. With over 15 manufacturing sites worldwide and sales in about 100 countries, your views, Mr. Modi, shall be very important for our viewers. We warmly welcome you to Insights with Nidhi Varma. Thank you, Nidhi, for this uh, very nice opportunity to share our views uh, on this platform with you. So, yeah. just shoot whatever yeah. you want to ask. Great, great. Uh, so, chlorine is back as a friendly element uh, with PVC becoming the safeguard in hygiene and healthcare during this pandemic. How do you see this positive impact that has come and this wave sustaining for business? So I think uh, PVC as a polymer has always been a sustainable polymer. So if you look at PVC, uh, almost 57% is uh, common salt, which is where the chlorine comes from in PVC. 43% uh, is crude oil, uh, as in, uh, uh, so if you look at the carbon footprint of PVC, it is one of the lowest in terms of any polymer today uh, available in existence. So it is really a green polymer. It is also highly recyclable. It is just that somewhere the dialogue around PVC and chlorine got intertwined and it got uh, kind of badly labeled as it because it contains chlorine, it is uh, a bad polymer. Uh, I think, uh, and not just PVC in this time, I think across the world, people have realized the importance of uh, plastics in general and uh, their importance in our lives and a lot of things otherwise we cannot imagine can happen uh, without plastics. It is just that all of us have to be having a responsible use of plastic and a responsible disposal of plastics. I think these are the things which are very, very critical to the polymer industry. And I think it's an opportunity for the industry also uh, to highlight the importance that it plays in our day-to-day -day lives. And also at this time, leverage this to, uh, to kind of uh, drive the message that really it is responsible use and responsible disposal that is the key to ensure that pollution does not happen. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Mr. Modi, how do you see the future of the PVC industry in the pipe segment, since that is 70% of the total business? By way, uh, when will the construction vertical revive? That has seen um, uh, degrowth. So uh, if you look at the pipe segment, particularly specifically in India, yes, 70% is pipes. And if you add fittings, almost 74% is pipes and fittings together as far as PVC is concerned. And within that, construction and agriculture are the two key elements that actually drive demand. And really, one leg construction had been already a weak one uh, even before the COVID uh, crisis started. So already the construction industry was down by 7-8% uh, uh, even in the first quarter uh, before the crisis. And uh, we believe the crisis has really dealt another blow in terms of the demand for specifically for the construction side. Uh, the only way it can revive is when there is, a, uh, I would say, uh, enough of government push towards infrastructure, uh, which is, so if you look at infrastructure itself is a very big chunk of the construction uh, industry, uh, whereas the commercial construction, etc. is only about, let's say, 30-40%, almost 50%, uh, 55% is the government spend that comes in infrastructure. And about for four to eight percent is what is the industrial spend. So actually, if you look at government is a big driver in uh, in a kind of uh, uh, you know improving the construction uh, sentiment there. Having said that, I believe that another year is what we would uh, need for construction to actually recover fully. And uh, and I would say this year uh, 2020 as a calendar year, we would see at least a 20 percent drop in the construction. Market. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we've seen a spike in the agri demand in the last month. I've been checking with the offtakes for the raw material uh, uh, polymer uh, producers. Uh, how do you see this demand being sustainable in the coming quarters for agri? Yes, so actually, if you look at the period, March to June is really the peak season, primarily because of agri uh, for the pipe market uh, and for PVC. 
and uh, really the uh, pvc got hit uh, a lot because it was in the peak season that the crisis started when I mean, it was just a picking up and then we had the crisis uh, so uh, entire almost 10 days of march were lost entire april good part of may and towards end of may we could start seeing uh, some movement and june i think we have seen some reasonable movement for agri pipes uh, we believe that the next quarter that is july august september three months again will be a low month with the start of monsoon for the agri segment and uh, we see agri uh, agri demand starting to drop uh, somewhere in uh, early part of july and uh, again i think the next round we will see again picking up somewhere in october onwards diwali time yeah uh, yeah around diwali time provided there is no second wave and lot of other things you know so no, we are keeping our fingers and toes all crossed <laughs> absolutely okay absolutely. um with the pe somehow replacing the pvc in pipe segment also how do you see the demand of pvc in the other sectors which is like calendaring profiles wire and cable packaging medical what is your view there sir so uh, i mean one part is that uh, polyethylene uh, if you look at data right from let's say 2013 uh, to let's say 2019 was the last where the if you look at the value of the plastic pipe industry it's in the region of around 27000 crores okay in this almost uh, 67 68% is still pvc and uh, if you look at in 2013 also around 65 66% was pvc okay polyethylene today is around 25% which was around 21% in 2013 so yes polyethylene because it's on a lower base is growing faster that is for sure uh, but couldn't really say that it is really eating a big chunk of the pvc uh, market polyethylene has a place in the pipe sector and the pvc has a position in the pipe sector which is really unchallenged so we all know that pvc pipes uh, are you know 50 years 60 years nothing happens okay yeah. so this is really an infrastructure problem uh, having said that if you look at the higher growth areas within pvc because pipe really is a mature sector in that sense you would see window profile is a is a strong sector where we will see that double digit growth happening uh, cables again will more or less move in line with the infrastructure uh, sector again and the and the construction demand uh, uh, in the region of about 7 8% uh, if you look at flexible pvc currently is a complete lull in demand because a lot of it goes into flex and automotive and uh, these kind of applications again where we don't see anything happening till let's say around diwali uh, where we would hopefully see some demand starting to pick up around uh, that time so uh, but there are newer areas like uh, flooring like foam board which are all coming up uh, and where uh, a lot of applications for pvc we will see uh, a very high growth rates in some of these segments although on a very very low base okay so these are these niche application areas where uh, pvc demand will come up yes okay that's a sunshine um so was your production of additives also impacted in your uh, production unit in uh, mp during the pandemic and did you kind of maintain the production and stock it so as to keep it for the later time or did you slow it down as the demand was slow no so what happened was that we were completely geared up for the peak season okay so yeah. we had enough inventory as far as the raw materials was concerned we were completely prepared for for a season so it, it we were completely caught unawares by this so for nearly 3 weeks uh, since the uh, lockdown was announced we had to shut down uh, but what happened somewhere around uh, the around 10th of april we got some requirement from some of our customers who are servicing the medical sector so hospital sector where the uh, you know, hospital sheets are required and then uh, also the iv tubing kind of thing so some of the compounders who supply into the medical uh, sector so these demands started coming in and that's where we got permission to start so around 12th april we started our plant uh, throughout april we would have delivered very very small quantities say maybe about 8 10 tons of product because these these are very very small markets in any case but we were able to deliver to these customers and i think that's what makes us feel proud that uh, even when everything was shut down we could start and we could even manage the logistics and deliver the products to our customers even at that time yes uh, somewhere then we were also got we got permission to operate at a higher level and uh, but overall you know average even let's say in june or so we would have operated in the, only around 60% levels because really that demand is yet to pick up in the whole uh, so fair enough uh, so would it be prudent option to look at global markets since there has been a destruction in demand in india uh, did you look at that option at all 
So I think uh, one very unique thing around this crisis is that everybody is affected around the world. You know, so in earlier crises we used to have always pockets where you know if there is a, a, a challenge in one pocket part of the world, another part of the world is still doing well. But this is one one crisis where all of us are really together. And, Uniformity uh, completely. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So and and being a global company, we have uh, you know plants in other locations. That so even there, right. those markets. So so we really did not uh, want to step on. to the other group companies where you know we are present anyway so in some way or the other so no we did not export uh, we do export in in a, some uh, product in small, some very small quantities uh, to support some of our group group companies which has remained like that so yeah. understood understood sir uh, do you think the indian uh, businesses which are the uh, converters are they geared up to meet this crisis and do you see any consolidations uh, in the indian market going forward amongst the processors so uh, i would say consolidation as a process uh, within the indus- indian industry has been actually in play uh, for some time now and where we will see that uh, the bigger processors will grow bigger the smaller ones some of really smaller ones would start dropping out the big size ones also with aggressive plans they are also growing okay uh, having said that uh, the crisis will probably yes it will uh, intensify this process of consolidation for sure um, but i still have a lot of faith in our indian entrepreneurship you know because we have dealt, if you look at the indian entrepreneurs you know uh, we have always dealt with ambiguity we have always dealt with uncertainties uh, in so many areas of our work and uh, in personal life as well and i'm pretty sure that uh, you know the, the strength that our indian entrepreneurs have is really phenomenal and i think they they will really uh, you know take opportunities out of this crisis and really grow further i mean it's it's a i am going to add on here so uh, one indian entrepreneur is opposite you right now when our conferences are getting delayed a bit i think this new exactly, idea is so popular so exactly what you are doing with the videos today is is yeah. you know phenomenal which uh, you know Yes, so, yeah. so new ideas and uh, we will all uh, stay here till things become better uh mr modi what are your thoughts on uh, sustainability will it take a back seat now since uh, the crisis situation has other more important issues to take care what is your view on this i so i would say okay i think one is the wishful thinking that yes so we have all seen the nice effects of uh, you know no industrial pollution and you know so yeah. we have seen the good effects on the clean air good quality of uh, you know so you could see the himalayas for example from jalandhar yes. time so you know and uh, the peacocks in some gardens up in north my family the wildlife absolutely. is uh, yeah, exactly exactly yes. so i mean i think we should uh, really not allow it to take a back seat i mean as uh, as industry as governments we should not allow it i know there are going to be priorities which are uh, more important in terms of uh, let's say uh creating jobs allowing industries to operate and uh, you know so there will be lot of other compulsions uh, which will take precedence over sustainability in today's times okay but having said that uh, if you look at uh, regions like europe for example they are very very clear that they will still continue with the sustainability as a very important parameter yeah. so yeah. i would say that progress or uh, let's say uh, growth and sustainability are really complementary they are not against each other so if you look at in the long run actually good sustainability also makes good economic sense okay and i think this is something that really uh, governments will realize and i'm pretty sure that while this another year may be still a lull but uh, there will be again uh, uh, a drive back towards sustainability soon and uh, i think also for yeah. entrepreneurs to ensure that they continue this drive because they will be seen in better light by uh, by society at large yeah. even following yeah. as a as an important pillar of their growth i agree with you sir a pvc industry is moving towards sustainability and phasing out the lead based stabilizers there has been a strong impetus from moef and ngt side to phase out lead based stabilizers and ngos have been making a lot of noise about it and have been very active we've seen in our uh, vinyl panels that we've held uh, what is your mix of calcium zinc based stabilizers versus lead based stabilizers in india as of now so uh, let me step back a little bit uh, what i would say okay for bell locker in india we are still only selling about 10 to 12% of our total portfolio as uh, as calcium based stabilizers okay. okay but if you look at the trend uh, uh, globally for example the global trend is very very clear if you look at 2016 
only about 28 of the world's PVC was stabilized by lead-free stabilizers. Okay. Uh, if you look at 2019, uh, almost 57% of the world's PVC was stabilized by uh, lead-free stabilizers. And a lot of this change of growth is coming actually from Asian markets. So it is China and Southeast, Northeast Asia, which have really changed away from uh, lead to lead-free. Okay. And in India also, the lead, the, this trend will follow. Whether there is a mandate or there is no mandate, it's only a matter of time. So... Because, you know, it's not that really scientifically speaking, if you see lead is, uh, in, is in such a small quantity in the pipes that it is not really having an impact in terms of the quality of water, etc. But it is not about, we are talking about science here, we are talking about perception. So if society says that there is lead inside this, okay, I don't think that's something nice that any consumer would want to uh, uh, even feel that there is something wrong with the product. So it's not about science, but it's about the perceptions that people have about the product. And that is why industry needs to change to correct the perception that the society has. So. True. In Europe, uh, is it totally uh, calcium zinc based? Yes, Europe has uh, completely. So Europe went through a whole phase where they decided uh, in, way back in 2010 that uh, uh, in order to, uh, and, and this is the Vinyl Plus program, before this it was called the Vinyl 2010. And they are doing a great job of uh, improving the image of PVC in general. And stabilizers was one of the ingredients in uh, in uh, in PVC, and they in 2010 decided that in 15 years they will phase out lead, mm -hmm. and they have done it. So wait for almost about a year before 2015, they completely phased out lead in uh, Europe. Okay. Yes. So in India, what are you going to think the bottlenecks will be in the process of phasing out uh, lead-based stabilizers? So where will the real issues come? See, I, I really believe that uh, the change must be voluntary. It cannot be forced down upon. People will always find a way to otherwise do things around uh, what mandates are. Okay, so it has to be really coming from industry to decide that, yes, I want to change. Okay, that is number one. There are challenges, no doubt. So, for example, uh, lead-free stabilizers are costlier. They are required at a little higher dosage than, uh, than the lead-based stabilizers. Okay. Uh, they are less effective uh, because lead is a very powerful stabilizer, so they are less effective. And they require very narrow processing windows, which means you need people with skills to be op able to operate the machines so that you do not have errors or do not have vestiges. Okay, so there are several challenges, but uh, one has to look at it from another perspective, that once everybody is lead-free, everybody has the same level of cost and everybody has the same level of challenges. Okay. And there will be people who will say that, okay, I want to be a market leader and I want to be lead free first. And I think that is what will drive eventually the change as uh, some of the big ones decide to make the change voluntarily and others will automatically we'll follow. Okay. In this is an example, we have seen this in the paint industry where Asian paints decided that, okay, we will go lead free with paints. And many others have now today, there are very less uh, lead based paints actually available. The mandates came later on. Okay, so. Agreed, sir. Um, PVC is the one product which needs a lot of additives. So what would you think the role of the additive manufacturers be in the India Vinyl Council that has been recently formed? So yes, the, the Indian Vinyl Council, I think first has to really be uh, mirroring what the Vinyl Plus and the Vinyl uh, uh, 2010 has been doing. And uh, I think it's, it would be a platform for the entire PVC industry to come together and share the uh, actually, the benefits of PVC uh, for uh, as an infrastructure polymer and for society at large. And the additive manufacturers are very much part because PVC is one polymer which you can't use by itself and it requires yes. a lots of additive. Uh, right. So, and two critical additive elements are stabilizers and the plasticizers. So, t right. these go in significant volumes into PVC. And I think this is what, uh, as if you want to have a sustainable PVC, then everything that goes into PVC needs to also be sustainable. And I think that's the dialogue that additive manufacturers will have to say that we are also partners in this industry to make it more sustainable and, uh, you know, uh, more uh, beneficial to the society at large. Well taken, sir. So from this pandemic experience, you are leading an organization. What have been your takeaways from the learnings that you faced? It has been a new experience for everyone worldwide. What have, because you are, uh, I've known you to be a very, very logical person. What are the learnings that you've taken, which you're going to keep uh, ingrained in the future uh, processes of your business? 
So I think uh, if you ask me uh, just one, if you are to uh, uh, just one, and I think uh, then I would say that we it is really uh, you know sticking to your core. So uh, our core value, let's say Bell Locker, is that we will never compromise on our quality and consistency of our product. Okay. So, however, there may be pressure in terms of cost, in terms of markets just not being there, uh, you know, in terms of whatever other cost cutting that we may be required to do in this time of crisis, there's one thing that will never go away and that's really our quality and consistency of our product. So, staying true to your core values and uh, still be still servicing customer in the same way that you would have done before or after or during the crisis. I think is what really uh, is something we will never, never compromise on. Okay. So however much there may be uncertainty, however much there may be, uh, you know, uh, changes that were happening. I think one change you will never see happen is in, in our, our quality of products or delivery or customer service or consistency. I think that's something that will stay with us. So I think that's something that our stability, stability is the new, the consistency that uh, your organization brings in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any message or thought that you would like to share with the processors of PVC? Because some of them are going through a little bit of difficulty right now because of the, you know, uh, parameters that we discussed earlier in the conversation. What is it that you would like to share with them? Because this message will be reaching almost all the processors. Sir. So I think that uh, I, I, I would say that uh, the message is that we are, I think, as, uh, as human beings and uh, as entrepreneurs, uh, I think we are far stronger than any pandemic uh, and I don't think it is ever going to take us down. This is a phase. Uh, it may be six months, it may be one year, but it's a phase. And uh, one thing is sure that once this phase is over and we ride out this, this bad phase, there is growth at the end of this, uh, this, this phase. So if you say that 2020 is going to be a bad year, I can say with a lot of certainty that 2021 is going to be a great year. Okay, I think so. Uh, Stick, I think it's, we have to really stick this out and keep our core values in mind. And uh, and there is there is there is light at the end of the tunnel, and there is growth, uh, a lot of growth that we have to look forward to in a country like India. Wonderful, sir. On that positive note, I'm going to say thank you very much for your time and uh, for your message that you were shared with our viewers. And we shall stay connected. Hopefully, we shall see you soon on the other side, sir. Thank you again. Thank you, Nini. Thank you for this. Thank you.